so this is the third chapter in your book okay it's like, can you see the black screen so this is the third chapter in your book second chapter i'm like leaving it right now i'll complete it later i haven't started also okay so i'll start the third chapter so third chapter ko naam che ho periodicity and classification classification of elements so we have like so many elements known right we have like hun- mo- over 100 elements known right now right and how do we classify them so classification of those elements right now is based on a single thing known as the periodic table yeah so by using a thing called a uh, method of arranging elements rearranging ar- elements with respect to some characteristic is known as the periodic table right and the, the the periodic table that we use right now is known as the modern periodic table so it looks something like this right so these are the groups these are the groups these are the periods right so the these everything everything inside we have elements right hydrogen let's say hydrogen we have helium here something like this so we have a periodic table that helps us to categorize elements right so categorize and place elements in different categories so kun element uh, gaseous huncha kun element uh, solid huncha kun element um, non metals huncha kun elements metal huncha so all these things are decided by this periodic table itself right so periodic table is the basis of classification of elements so chapter name is classification of elements and periodicity so so how are we classifying elements right and how does how does how does the modern periodic table evolve so i don't think like it's not like practically impossible to form something like this so, so as complex as this periodic table that we have right now in the beginning itself right so it has evolved from some uh, basic right some basic forms of periodic table that we need to discuss in this chapter okay so uh, the first that we did in even we did this in class 10 as well so the first type was i think you know about this if i if i write it down you'll just recall it, recall it it's called dobrinier's dobrinier's triad so dobrinier's triad was the first system of grouping of elements so elements were grouped in certain with respect to certain properties and those uh, groups were known as triads because they consisted three elements let's say elements x y and z and the basis on which they were grouped were similar physical properties similar physical uh sorry where is my screen so they were grouped they were grouped on the basis of similar physical properties right similar uh physical properties right so like physical properties in the sense like maybe they all were liquid they all were gases they all smelt they they all had a like a uh, different kind of smell right they were pungent smelling let's say they were pungent smelling gases pungent smelling gases right and they had some atomic mass or atomic number they had some atomic number let's say x y and z right and according to that uh, according to uh, dobrenier's triad the average mean the average the arithmetic mean of these atomic numbers x y and z divided by 3 should be almost equal to y so this was not that important this is not that important but this is the basis of periodic the modern periodic table that we have right now so this was known as the dobrenier triad dobrenier triad dobrenier's dobrenier's triad right triads one right here we are talking about three elements right grouped together based on the similar uh, based on the similar physical properties like let's say for this case i'm t- talking about three gases which smell pungent right they are not smelling good they are uh, they have a pungent and strong irritating smell to the nose right so uh, according to that uh, and all these elements will have their separate atomic numbers right they have atomic numbers uh, not atomic numbers it's atomic mass atomic mass they have separate atomic mass and the arithmetic mean of these atomic masses should be almost equal to the atomic mass of this right so that was that was the statement that dobrenier gave so that was that's not that important but just remember this so first thing that came uh, before like periodic table periodic table properly 
the modern periodic table ko one of the predecessor was uh, this dobrynas triad okay dobrynas triad is very important you need to remember it you don't need to, to remember what is inside the dobrynas triad just remember that it was like one of the predecessor of this modern periodic table okay so this was there dobrynas triad so this is yeah triads it's given in a book page number 75 ncert book in each the case he noticed that the middle element of each triad has an atomic weight about half way between the atomic weight of the other two so so the same thing that i said so there are three elements x y and z right so atomic weight of this is almost equal to the sorry atomic weight of y is almost equal to the atomic weight of the extremities right x plus y divided by 2 so not that important x plus z x plus z divided by 2 should be almost equal to y right so this should be almost equal to y so not that important just remember the triads thing okay so there was the way of grouping of elements they were grouped on the basis of uh, similar physical properties right and this you need to know okay so what is the next thing uh, this is done so after this we had law of octaves so according to the according to your book we have law of octaves it was uh, it was discovered by newland so newland's law of octave on the li newland's so law of octaves so this was the first time where like first law where repetition was like considered so according to octaves like its octaves are like musical notes okay so there are like seven octaves and eighth one is the repetitive of the first one so like in the the classical music in india we have sa re ta ni now last one is sa as well so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and the eighth one is basically the repetition of the first one right sa re ga ma pa da ni sa so that guy newland who discovered this law of octave was actually a musician okay so he just came to this conclusion that like musical notes in a octave The elements also show this kind of repetitive property so you have like a first element here second third fourth fifth sixth seventh and now eighth one will fall below this so the so this sa will not be here will be here which meant the first and the eighth element will show repetitive properties right so this was the first uh first like theory or the law in which repetition or periodicity was explained so periodicity bhaneko ke ho bhanda heri chai so when we come across a new term called periodicity periodicity bhaneko chai periodicity is basically repetition of some property so something some property is getting repetitive repetitive r e p e t a t i o n repetition of repetition of certain property in elements so let's say uh, first second third fourth fifth and six, seventh elements are unique right so first seven elements are totally unique now eighth element has the property similar to the first element so that is known as periodicity so there is some similarity between the two two or more different elements so that is periodicity repetition of properties repetition of pro some physical or chemical properties within elements or elements right so that is known as periodicity so this was newland's law of octave was the first one where a a, a, little, a basic idea of basic idea of periodicity was introduced yeah periodicity was introduced so there were a lot of laws in this law of octaves as well so i think we discussed the, discussed this in class 10 itself so the flaws were like he placed uh, newland placed two different cobalt and nickel and the same slot like they so he placed two uh, metals in the same slot meaning the, the those two metals are completely identical which is totally incorrect this is not possible right so he placed this and he was also very stern about his discoveries so during his time i think 52 elements were discovered i'm not sure there was there was a number of element that was discovered till like till the time when newland was uh, was working on this right so i think there were 52 elements that were discovered till then and he formulated a table a periodic table or a newland's law a newland's table that just had space for 52 elements and he was stern that no more elements would be discovered other than the 52 elements that is known right there right but now we come to the conclusion that right now we have or over 100 plus elements right so he was completely wrong in that aspect 
and this one was also a major flaw of his uh, theory so he placed two metals which are completely different in the same group symbolizing that they are like literally the same but that is not the case right no two metals can be exactly the same so this was done uh, by newland right so what do we have next uh, the next law i think it's mendel's law mendel's periodic law so this is this is the most closest to the modern periodic table right so we have uh, okay wait uh, you, you have a question yeah tell me what's your doubt tell me tell me tell me i know Yes, I'm recording. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Why? I know. Yes, I did. I said. No, no, I'm recording. Bull, bullet, 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 so after this, we had Mendel's periodic law. Uh, Mendel's periodic law was the closest uh, to what uh, we have right now, right? So he was the one that brought a periodic table where addition of elements were also like possible. So he made a periodic table that where uh, new elements could be added, right? New elements, new elements could be added, right? He made a flexible table. So he placed empty slots, empty slots for elements that could be discovered in the future not like new lens new lens periodic table was totally like 52 elements are there there's no way that there will be more than 52 elements ever discovered there will not be like will not be a possibility there's not even a possible case that will get elements more than 52 right so that was the case where that was the basis on which new lens periodic table was based but mendel's periodic table was totally different now he now the term groups and periods groups groups and periods were introduced right so in a periodic table the vertical things are known as groups and the horizontal things are known as periods right so this is known as group this is known as period so this was this this was like uh, a major feature of mendel's periodic table right and also the the ability to add new elements uh, if new elements were discovered right so that was also one of the uh, important features of mendel's periodic table so new new elements called like space coil. So if you just search for Mendel's periodic table in the internet, you'll find a table where there will, you'll find some empty spaces. Okay, so you'll find some empty spaces in the periodic table. So that basically means uh, Mendel's left that place empty purposely, right? So that later on, if uh, some elements, some more elements are discovered, they can be placed in that uh, the particular empty slot. And this was very well, well very like welcomed by the chemist of that time because it was like far-sighted thought right where new elements could be found and new elements could be added so mendel's periodic table was the most closest to the one that we have right now right the the periodic table that we have right now is known as the modern periodic table right so the table that we have right now is known as the modern periodic table m o d r and modern modern periodic Table, right so we have a modern periodic table with a specific number of groups and specific number of periods right so we uh, we designate the different groups and period with res with regard to something right there is some distinction in uh, dif distinction in which why we place an element in some group and some period right so like for example if i tell you in our periodic table the groups that we have like this right this is the group this is a group right so we have groups and we have elements placed in groups. So every element in the group will have the same valency, right? So if there is this like in one vertical, in one vertical column, all the elements will have the same valency. So that is one of the speciality of the modern periodic table. So all the elements in the same group will have the same valency and in the same period. So if the elements are in the same period, like let's say first, second, third, so first, second, third, fourth, if they are in the same period, the number of shells, will remain the same shells remain same shells in the sense like there is a nucleus right nucleus and there are electrons revolving around the nucleus so in the in the like same period in the same period the number of shells so if the first element has three shells 
of three shells right in which electrons are revolving then even the eighth element will have three shells right it'll always remain three shells in the same period right but in the same group that will increase as we go down and decrease as we go up that will come later but these are like few characteristics of the modern periodic table so if elements are in the same group they'll have the same valency and if the elements are in the same period they'll have the same uh, the equal number of shells right the number of orbits or shells will be equal so these are like some of the features of the periodic table that we have right now modern periodic table so one of the major distinction between uh, all these previous periodic tables and the modern periodic table is proper distinction of groups and series uh, gr groups and periods right so they are proper they are properly distinguished so vertical things are known as uh, the groups and uh, excuse me the horizontal ones are known as the period right and there is a proper definition of periodicity so periodicity like was introduced in the new lens periodic table right so after the seventh seventh note in the octave the eighth note is repeating so that was periodicity but it is much more well defined in the modern periodic table right so uh, all the metals having valency one are kept in the group one in first group right and elements in the same elements with almost similar properties are placed in the same group like halogens right so we have we have a group of elements called halogens so halogens are basically the seventh group or the se second last group in the periodic table so these are the seven uh, se second last group in the periodic table so it starts with i think fluorine chlorine bromine iodine whatnot so these are all pungent smelling gases right pungent smelling gases so everything everything that was a basis of a periodic table like in the first period first first uh, grouping that was developed like first sense of like sense of understanding about the elements and grouping of elements was done by dobrinier right and he, he discovered the triad thing so in that case also what we what was done was like elements with similar physical properties like pungent spelling or metals like uh, solids like liquids they, they were arranged in like uh, elements of three right so similar thing is carried out here no, nothing is completely omitted okay so every inspiration from every law is taken so here we have gases which are pungent spelling right so bromine is liquid in uh, in room temperature others are like gases and they are all pungent spelling all smell pungent that is for for sure that's a fact okay and these are like most of them are uh, gases so physical property level they are kept in groups so the the uh, Dobrinier way of uh, arranging thing is also not completely omitted and the, the modern periodic table is a combination of everything so like you're improving after every step so uh, Dobrinier was the first one after that Newlands improved it right he improved it a little bit and brought about the concept of periodicity so something is repeating after some time so that was taken further by Mendel's right Mendel's brought that concept further and uh, like distinguished groups and periods also kept spaces for like future uh, for like future discovery of elements to be placed there then after that we have the refined and the most modern periodic table that takes inspiration from every predecessor of it right inspiration layer there is a periodic table that can define almost every element right there are some some drawbacks of the modern periodic table as well but the pros or the like advantages of the modern periodic table just overshadows the overshadows the a disadvantage right that should be clear so modern periodic table is like a combination of all other periodic uh, all other periodic uh, the thing that was tried out right grouping of elements that this topic combination is the modern periodic table okay so modern periodic table is distinctly uh, distinctly categorized into groups and periods right groups are anything that is from top to bottom and period is anything that is from left to right so there are i don't know 103 elements 118 elements in the modern periodic table so according to a periodic table that is provided in your textbook i read the last element to be 118 the atomic number of that element is 118 so basically there are 118 elements that are discovered right now right and it is called organization okay organization i don't know i have never heard about this so the 118th element is known as oganeson so 118 element is O G A N E S S O N organization. I don't know how to pronounce this as well. So this is the last element in the periodic table, modern periodic table. So this is so this should be clear. Okay, so I told you I, I told you two different things about groups and periods, right? 
so in groups the valency remain co remains constant in a period number of shells number of shells remain constant so these two things you need to, to remember okay it's important in the modern periodic table uh, if you are in the same group the valency will remain the same so elements in the second group will enjoy the valency of 2 throughout so the first element in group 2 and the last element in group 2 all will have a valency of 2 okay so that should excuse me uh, that should be very clear and periods periods now when, when we talk about going left to right in a period the number of electrons will increase the valency will increase but the number of shells will remain the same so number of shells will exactly remain the same so these things you need to remember it okay then we have what else do we have then we have periodic law modern periodic law that uh, periodic law there's a statement you need to you need to write it down just write it down okay i'll just dictate it to you it's very simple i'll explain you after that the physical and chemical properties so this is known as the modern periodic law so modern periodic law the physical and chemical properties of elements the physical and chemical properties of elements are periodic functions functions of their atomic numbers are periodic functions of their atomic number the physical and chemical properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic number are periodic functions of their atomic number so this basically means so the first statement the first line tells me physical and chemical properties of what of the elements are a periodic function so physical and chemical properties of elements is a periodic function periodic function of atomic number so basically this means that in the modern periodic table elements are categorized based on their atomic numbers so atomic number like or very they are placed in certain positions in the periodic table like for example the first element is hydrogen right so since the atomic number of hydrogen is one it is placed in the first group the second element is helium so since helium is the second element in the second element whose atomic number is also two it is placed in the second spot in the periodic table right uh, then we have lithium lithium has atomic number of three so it is placed in the third spot in the periodic table then we have beryllium similarly it is placed in the fourth spot because its atomic number is four so something like that so the physical and chemical properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic number so the elements are placed in the periodic table with respect to their atomic number and that will also determine their physical and chemical properties right so which basically means that so element this lithium being placed uh, like lithium communicates one we have sodium and potassium right so sodium is i don't know what's the atomic number but they are in the same group right which basically means these elements share common physical or chemical properties right they may not be completely similar they may not be completely same the physical and chemical properties may not be completely same but they will share similar properties so elements being placed in the periodic table is a function of its atomic number so they are placed in the periodic table with respect to their atomic number so if their atomic number is 5 they'll be placed in the fifth spot if their atomic number is 10 they'll be placed in the 10th spot right and also the uh, the physical and chemical properties will be affected by the position in the periodic table so elements are placed in the periodic table keeping in mind their physical and chemical properties so if anything is placed below something let's say there is an element x and element y here so these the beryllium element x and y element will share the common properties share properties right share property maybe physical maybe chemical may not be completely same but they might have similarities between the properties, right? So that is a statement of the modern periodic table. So according to the statement of modern periodic table, so I'll write it again, physical and chemical properties of elements is a periodic function, periodic function of atomic number. 
सो पीरियोडिक फंक्शन बने को द प्रपर्टीज आर रिपीटिंग ओवर सम टाइम राइट पीरियोडिसिटी बने को मैं अगे एक्सप्लेन करे थे आई एक्सप्लेन यू वॉट इज पीरियोडिसिटी सो पीरियोडिसिटी इज सम प्रपर्टी इज रिपीटिंग ओवर टाइम सो सम आफ्टर सम इंटरवल द प्रपर्टी इज रिपीटिंग लाइक अगेन आई विल गिव यू द सेम एक्जापल सोडियम लिथियम पोटासियम तो सो दीज आर ऑल वेरी लाइक दीज आर मेटल्स विथ आर हाईली रिएक्टिव राइट हाईली रिएक्टिव सो दिस इज बेसिकली एक्जापल अफ पीरियोडिसिटी सो पीरियोडिसिटी इज चेंज सो लिथियम बेरिलियम बोरॉन देन वी हेव कार्बन सो सो ऑन देन वी कम टू सोडियम राइट सो दिस देर इज पीरियोडिसिटी मतलब देर इज रिपीटेशन देर इज रिपीटेशन अफ एलिमेंट्स बेस्ड ऑन द सिमिलर केमिकल और फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज सो सोडियम इज जस्ट बिलो लिथियम विच बेसिकली मीन्स दैट दे शेयर अ कॉमन प्रॉपर्टी सो आई टेल यू द कॉमन प्रॉपर्टी इज हाईली रिएक्टिव सो दीज आर ऑल हाईली रिएक्टिव मेटल्स highly reactive metals right these are these are the this is the common property shared between these three elements so the physical and chemical properties of elements is governed is placed in a periodic function it is placed periodically and it is governed by the atomic number so physical and chemical properties of elements is a periodic function of its atomic number so they are periodically placed in the periodic table right the periodicity is taken in mind taken in consideration and the repetition and the position in the periodic table is decided by their atomic number right so uh, try to understand this they are if they are placed in the same group they have like similar physical or chemical properties physical or chemical properties so if they are placed in the same group they will have similar physical or chemical properties so that is the modern periodic law so i'll i'll state it again physical and chemical properties of elements are is a periodic function of its atomic number so in a periodic table just understand it this way in a periodic table elements are placed periodically which means they are placed with respect to their properties right with respect to their repeating properties and that is governed by the atomic number so atomic number is the one that governs the position of elements position of elements in the periodic table with respect to their periodicity with respect to their repeating properties okay so that is the modern periodic law so that is uh, the law that governs the periodic table right now so okay so this is not that difficult you need to read it once it's in the book okay so this is modern periodic law so we studied about the history of periodic table how periodic table started what who were the scientists who like started grouping the elements so first one was dobrinier he started first grouping the elements first then it was carried on by newland then newland newland's work was carried on forward by mendel's and mendel's law is further simple as further like uh yeah further changed and made better into the modern periodic table or modern periodic law that we have right now okay so this is how uh, grouping of elements led to a uh, classification of elements and formation of period modern periodic table right now so a simple grouping of element that was done by dobrinier like grouping three elements with similar physical or chemical properties in a triad that led to the formation of a complex periodic table that we refer to now to right now right we refer the periodic table to find the atomic number to find the mass number to find the position of the element in the periodic table so by position we can also find the properties we can guess the properties of those elements right so these are all the positives of having a modern periodic table which was just like just like started it had a humble beginning a person just grouping elements in three into three like triads right and that later on developed into the modern periodic table that we have right now so this is the history of the periodic table and how what is the modern periodic table so this is the introduction to this chapter so we'll continue this chapter tomorrow and day after tomorrow so we'll do nomenclature of elements with atomic number greater than 100 tomorrow and we'll just look at some look at some elements in the periodic table and find and try to determine what their properties are okay so we'll try to uh, we'll try to read the periodic table and try to understand why the elements are placed